Welcome, everyone. We're uh, actually going to take a little break for this week on uh, a biblical teaching, although oftentimes my good friend here, Kim, is uh, she tunes into Sunday Night Scripture. But uh, we also like to talk a lot about what's going on in Canada with the laws. And um, Kim has had a recent victory that I want her to share. So this uh, particular subject today is about, you know, what happened with her charges. And so I just want to review her story with you so you can hear um, a human story. Sometimes we get our heads so far into um, textual things that we forget that there's real people on this earth right now. <laughs> and so everybody, this is my friend, Kim. Say hello, Kim. <laughs> Hi. Thanks. <Kim. laughs> and so what I'd like to do, uh, Kim, um, is basically just, and as I was mentioning to you that, that there's just so many different stories that I've heard from different locations. I actually don't remember every single detail about what had happened in your case. So if you don't mind me asking Kim, or first of all, actually, if you don't mind me asking you this, um, can you tell everybody where you're from? I'm actually from Ontario. Oh, okay. Ontario. Oh, you grew I, up in Ontario. Yeah, I didn't move here until 2017. Okay, and where is here? Okay, so I'm in Campbell River. Okay, that's awesome. Uh, BC on Vancouver Island. Okay, so okay. So it's halfway up the island in the Georgian Strait Discovery Passage. That's where Campbell River is. Okay. Okay. That, well, that's great. Okay. So then something happened obviously during the, you know, the C-19 thing. Uh, can you tell me what occurred that kind of put you in a situation where you had to actually, um, you know, deal with some legal, legal things? Yeah. Well, this, it, because of what the government did, it caused so many people to be hassled in stores. So this happened in April 24th, 2020. Okay. At the Save On Food Store here in Campbell River. Now, because of what was going on, there were some people that were wearing masks, but it wasn't enforced yet. It, it just got to the time where, oh, well, they're trying to social distance stuff. Anyway, so I moved here to help look after my mom. My mom had dementia and because she had dementia, it was hard for my sister. So that's why I moved here. So I went to the store because um, she was in a nursing, I call them jails, the nursing home. I went to the store that day at Save On Foods here in Campbell River to get her some some goodies, some pop and chips, just stuff that she liked eating because I don't know if you've ever been in a nursing home, but it's gross. <laughs> and because of what was happening, we weren't allowed to go in and see her. So because of the dementia, she thought I had abandoned her. So this was a way to, to do something nice to her. See, I'm told you, I'm, to do something nice for her. So she knew I didn't forget about her. So that's why I was in the store that day, because it wasn't my shopping, it was hers. So I had done all my shopping. I had been in there for about half an hour. I had walked the store twice. I weighed more at the time. I'm, I have disabilities. Um, I was in a car accident in 1989. I, my pelvis is permanently dislocated plus other stuff. So walking for me is really hard still to this day. Um, so I'd walked the store twice and I got everything I needed to get for my mom. And I was going to the checkout as I go there. So this is after one 30 in the afternoon, as I get to the check, go to the checkout. Cause I, I just went along the back of the store. I go down the produce in the back of the store. There was a barrier. So, now that I know who it is, it was Jacqueline Poulton was standing at the barrier. All I said is, what is the barrier for? Because in my head, see, people don't get this. When you're disabled, you have to think about everything you do. I knew I had to go and see my mom. So I was going to have to go do that walking too. So I have to plan out what I do. Because if I get too sore, I'm not going to be able to do something else later. So... Going yeah, around. my dad. If you if you don't mind me interrupting, my dad. He's he's approaching eighty seven. He says he says I have to think about every step that I take because walking's not as easy as it was back when I was thirty and forty, et cetera, et cetera. So I can definitely attest that you have other people that if they have difficulties walking, it they you actually do start to account for your steps, and that's what you're basically saying. You're like, look, I, I'm looking at a barrier here, and uh, this might make a there. world of difference. Say that again want to go there so the barrier is here right here i want to go there like right beside the barrier 
the self checkout that's all open. I'm sorry, I don't work for the store. I'm not. I'm not doing it. So I, I all I said to Polton was, "What is the barrier for?" Now there's, I don't know if you, there's a huge aisle, huge aisle. It's it's like really wide there. This is the after one o'clock in the afternoon, so it was probably about one thirty by the time I had finished because I don't do stuff in the morning. I'm not a morning person. It says, "What is the barrier for?" And ju- and um. Colton says it's for social distancing to keep down congestion. And all I'm thinking is this is insane. There's nobody there. I thought there was going to be, you know, a spill or something. There was nobody there. So all I said is you got to be freaking kidding. And I'll walk away. She didn't like that. She followed me. She followed me and harassed me, demanding that I tell her that I'm going to keep social distancing or I can't get my groceries. I don't know if you've, you were had any of this happen but anytime somebody was after you for social distancing they're right in your face she was like two feet from me telling me i gotta answer this question told her to leave me alone back off you're not even keeping social distancing but you're coming after me and i hadn't done anything i walk away she's mad so she calls for backup because i wouldn't answer her question i get almost to the end of the aisle and she says well if you don't answer my questions you can't get your your groceries so now all I'm thinking is, crap, I've walked the store twice. I was already hurting. That's why I was upset of having to go around. Now I can't get my groceries. I'm going to have to do this all over again. I'm going to have to go into another store and do this all over again, which it took me days, sometimes weeks, before I would even go into a store because it was it was just chaos. She had called for help. They came. I had got to the end of the aisle um, Cleaver had come up behind us, had caught up to us at the end of the aisle. He grabbed my cart. Now I can't leave because I didn't take my cane. So where I parked, it was right beside the, the carts, the grocery carts. So I didn't need to take my cane because I've lost a lot of them because I've left them in the cart. So I didn't take my cane. Yeah, he grabbed my cart. He pulled it. I, I'm stumbling. Now Polton is standing right beside me. Now I can't go anywhere. I can't leave. Then, then another guy comes, and they're all standing around me. Oh, they had me circled. I The videos show this. They had me circled, and now they're telling me I have to leave, but they won't let me leave. They're, they're giving me crap. And I'm, what are you doing? This, I'm, I'm frustrated now because I want to get my groceries. Now you're harassing me. Like, leave me alone. Anyway, I... I had told them that I was disabled. I needed my cart. I tried to to look for my cane. It's not there. Now I can't go. Finally, they let go of my cart. Um, Cleaver lets go of my cart. Then McMuldrich grabs my cart as I'm trying to leave when they've been telling me I have to leave the store. He grabs my cart. Then Poulton kicks my cart to stop me from going and, and kicks it in towards her. I, they find, I get away from them. They follow me, harassing me. I get around the corner. Then there's another staff, Weiner. He stops me. I'm trying to get out of the store. He stops me in front of me. He finally lets go. I go around him. I get to the, the exit of the store. I think, finally, I'm going to be able to get out of this place. Now I am ticked. I am so frustrated. You people have done this to me. I hadn't even done anything. I get and, to the And just end. for clarity, I'm assuming you also probably didn't walk away with your groceries either, right? I had like, no, I had to have the cart because I can't walk. Oh, okay. I can't okay. walk without the cane. This is what the problem was, is they wouldn't let go of the cart. I need this cart to get to my car because I right. can't oh, walk. Okay. And I, I have gotcha. fallen and I, I, um, I have a limp. Um, it's, it's, I've got a lot of disabilities, but anyway, so now I think I'm almost at the store, out of the store in the, in the entrance way. Dawson had come up. I stop and I'm wait for him to get beside me. I'm t- I need, I'm pointing to my car. I need the cart to get to my car because of all that had gone on. I totally forgot I had groceries in the cart. Totally forgot. I'm just wanting to get away from these people. I tell him I need the cart to get to my car. It was and showed him where it was. 
and I go to leave, he goes in front of my cart and grabs it. And now he's trying to pull it out of my hand. I know it was stupid because he was six, he's six feet. It took, it was, took me a, a bit to figure it out. He's trying to twist it out of my hands. I'm trying to go around him with the cart. I finally let go. And then Cleaver comes up to give, give me a cart as I'm walking away. Oh, now you're going to offer me a cart? Really? So I go to walk away and then Weiner follows me. To, so I think I'm gone. I think I'm free. Weiner follows me to my car, still harassing me. I, I had been going to that store since 2017. I did not expect this. Did not expect this. This was so traumatizing. I was so upset. It took me months to even be able to drive in that parking lot. Even to this day, I I get anxious when I go by it. So I know now, what did they, yeah, did, did they end up putting a charge of, on you of some kind? So the year goes by. I find out November 4th, I, we have deer here, a lot of deer. I was on my way to the gym. This is 11 o'clock at night. I'm on the way to the gym. I stopped for a deer. And a cop was behind me. He came up to my window. This is November 4th. So this is November 4th of 2021, not 2020. This is over a year later. Wow. He saw my license plate. I have my mom's car. He saw my license plate and he came up and he, he asked, he, he had said, um, he asked me what my name was. Well, first of all, his, the look on his face was shock. He says, you stopped for the deer, didn't you? I go, yeah, I did. I stopped for the deer. I don't get a deer. If you're going to stop for him, I might as well get a picture. And uh, he said, well, you have a warrant. What's your, no, he asked me what my name was. And he had a shocked look on his face. I told him what my name was. He says, do you have another name? Because I changed my maiden name. My married name was Harrison. My maiden name was Woman. I had changed my 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 married my name back to my maiden name. And I told him my name. And then he said, well, you have a warrant out for your arrest. He says, no, that's a mistake. It's, it can't be. It wasn't me. Somebody must have used my name. And then he said the date, April 24th, 2020. I knew it was me. I knew it was me. I didn't know what for. And I kept saying, what's it for? He's, and he says, you have one count of causing a disturbance and two counts of assault. I'm going, what are you talking about? So the only place is, so no, April 24th, 2020 is very memorable to me because I had this incident at Savon. And then I went to the to the nursing home and had problems there. I wasn't able to get in to see my mom. I sat outside her window because of her dementia. She thought her um, telephone was her remote control. There were two staff. Now, remember, this is the time where they're clapping for all the nurses, right? Oh, they're they're putting their life in je jeopardy. They're supposed to be wearing PPE. Yeah. No, they weren't. I got pictures to prove it. There are people in that room. I wasn't allowed to go in and see my mom, but there were staff in there two of them without any mask without any any gloves but i'm not allowed to go and see my mom so i'd sat there for about 20 minutes or so because they wouldn't let me get in to see her by the way they put her food in quarantine for three days it's insanity so when i laughed the while i'm sitting there the nurses are going in and out and in and out and in and out so, yeah, I made a comment to one of the nurses. This is, it must be nice to be able to go in and out as you please. And she said, oh, I'm putting my children at risk. This is, yeah, it really looks like it. She comes out and takes a picture. So I had both of these happen that day. So April 24th is memorable. Okay. Okay. So the, both those incidents, they happened on the same day. Okay. Gotcha. Right. Because I was going to get groceries for my mom. For your mom. Right. Yep. Okay. So I asked the cop, what was it for? And he showed me it. And I have to, I have to say, he. I am so glad I got him. It was Officer Gimme. He was really good to me. He was shocked that it was me because I'm a little old lady. And I said, "What are they for?" And he says, "All I." And he showed me on the computer. All it shows is is one one um, ground of causing disturbance and two counts of assault. So I didn't know whether it was Savon 
or the nursing home because I was banned that day from the nursing home. I was never allowed on the property again. Can't see my mom. Anyway, so then I would he he let me take my see this this is this was a surprise too because he let me take my cane. They were really good to me. I had no problem with them. So then when I get my disclosure, then I find out what it is. Then I find out when I got my disclosure. I'm so thankful I was smart enough to to get my disclosure ahead of time. And then it was because of the save on. So I was charged with one count of causing a disturbance because I was frustrated with what they were doing to me. And then the one what the one count was Holton had um made allegations that I coughed on her because she wasn't happy that I wouldn't answer her question. She was mad. It even says in the witness statement that it was her job to enforce. Really? No, not your job to enforce anything. And then the other account of salt was that I rammed the cart into Dawson. When I, that was the guy that grabbed it when I was trying to leave. So those were the charges. Okay. So I didn't know until November 4th. Okay, so, so now you got these charges, and of course, uh, it, and I, I and I don't mean this in any kind of offensive way. So just let, I'm just gonna put this out there, and you can answer me. You don't have to give me any details. Um, are you extremely, extremely wealthy with millions of dollars, and you can pay for lawyers all day? No, I'm on disability. Okay, so there we go. Okay, I've so been now on you're on disability since my car accident. I can't okay. work. I can't work. So you're in a position now where you have these charges. And of course, you're um, in a in, in a you're on disability, so um, you're you know you're not hanging around uh, you know with uh, Justin Bieber, <laughs> right? Nope. Okay. And now, so now you have to essentially defend yourself, if you will, against these charges because these charges are being laid upon you. So, if you don't mind me fast forwarding, then of course you you got involved with obviously Jane Scarf and then Rebecca Shepard with Stanford E. Go go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, Take don't over. wait. No. No, no okay. because I did get a lawyer. Oh, okay. I did get a lawyer at first. I got a legal aid lawyer. Okay. I gave her the disclosure in December. The in December the of? First December of 2021. Okay. Because I had had it. I'd seen it. I'd seen all of the videos and everything. I had given it to her. Now, when I got it, the videos wouldn't work. We had to spend some time and try to find a, an application that would work. So I told her what application she needed to have. A week before the trial date, the first trial date, which was, it, it was uh, April 19th, she finally talks to me. Trials next week, the next week. She admits that she hadn't even seen the video surveillance. Hadn't even looked at, she had it all this time, hadn't done anything i had 20 questions for her she couldn't answer any of them because she hadn't seen it she told me that the crown hadn't seen them either they couldn't watch the videos so the crown hadn't seen the videos she hadn't watched the videos but she's still going to be able to prepare but she had told me that well they can they can get me on causing a disturbance we need to make a plea bargain for causing a disturbance right then and there i no no so this no, happened april 20 April 24th, 2020. Yeah. Statute of limitations is 12 months, which means that they have until April 24th, 2021 to Mm. charge me, not to file charges, to charge me, to notify me, to charge me. I wasn't notified nor charged until the following November 4th, 2021. That's okay. over 18 months from okay. the time of the incident. So that was the first thing that they did wrong. And the, and the first lawyer should have had it dismissed right then and there because she dang well knew that the statute of limitations was over. So I had to go through the whole trial. And then I had sentencing on, see, my dates aren't great either. I think it was, yeah, it was July 18th of 2023. I was supposed to have sentencing. But because the judge had already found me guilty of these charges, I had filed appeal on May 11th. I remember that because that's the day I fell and hurt my shoulder. So I had filed the appeal on May 11th. So in my head, my understanding is I didn't need to go to sentencing because I have an appeal in. They can't sentence me when I'm appealing her judgment. 
I didn't think I had to show up. So that was the that was another charge that I got. So that mm, was the okay. first win was that win. And that happened <laughs> that that got dismissed because there was a whole lot of fooling around too. Boy, have I ever learned a lot. There was a whole bunch of fooling around on that because on the 19th, I had turned myself in, spent five and a half hours in a holding cell, which I ended up having to take meds because I was in so much pain. Went up in front of Judge Flewelling, which is the judge that found me guilty. I told her why I didn't go for sentencing, and she accepted the reason of why I didn't show up. Then she still gave me my sentencing. So I had that, and then what I had made a I had waited for the court date for that charge so that I could file a motion to have it dismissed. Because I never, I never, they couldn't prove mens rea. I didn't do it on intent. There was no intent. Plus, I also got leeway. So I had gone up for that. And, and that you get leeway partially to... because you get leeway partially, obviously, because you're self representing. You, you know, you don't right. know the rules like, a, let's say, a standard lawyer would. That was something that we I, learned I, also from, you know, Jane and Rebecca that, you know, we can talk about as when you're representing yourself, and you can say, well, I, I need leeway here because I'm not in this game day in, day out like you guys are. And that's something that right. Canadian and citizens had, should yeah. know about. Yeah. Yeah. And I had, there was no intent to break the law. Right. I've already gone through two years of important crap dealing with this stuff. Right. It didn't need another charge against me because it's also a criminal charge. Gee, thanks. Thanks a lot. Anyway, I lost my, I lost, I just started crying in court because this judge didn't want anything to do with it. He didn't, it was like, he didn't even understand. Trying to explain to him, because I have the audio, trying to explain to him that, no, this is because the Crown was mad at me because the sentencing wasn't what she wanted. She wanted to have me sentenced for community service. I'm disabled. I had sent in, I have a, uh, all my dis disabilities. I wrote it all out. So she wasn't happy at that. And then they, then she wanted me to have a thousand dollar fine. Well, you know what the prices of food is. I was even contemplating on getting rid of my cats because it's so hard. I mean, my, my freezer was full from the beginning of last, I guess it was last, the middle of last year. It's empty. I can't keep it full. It's the food's too much. So she wasn't happy that. So she, the judge didn't dismiss that charge, which I felt she should have right then and then. The, the Crown, McNichols, wanted to have me go through this court because of that charge. So I had got the the audio from Judge Flewelling saying that she accepted the charge. And then I also got the audio from showing up to this other judge where the Crown had already stated that he wanted to dismiss the charges. But the judge says, no, you have to go through, through forward to court for trial. Yeah. So a few days before trial, I got a notice. I can't remember exactly what day because there's too many dates that the charges were dismissed. So that was my first win. Okay, that's awesome. Because they knew they had nothing. Right, right. Yeah, right. And then right. That, and that's kind of one of the lessons, right, that, that you know, we kind of want to voice out to Canadian citizens. It's like, look, just because you've been charged doesn't mean you're guilty right and you have to recognize that but but they will act as if you're guilty and it really is unfortunately it's up to you as a citizen to stand your ground be bold and and kind of weather through the storm and i think you're a great example of someone that we can you know look to and say okay here's a person that doesn't have you know great advantage you know isn't hooked up with you know the big wigs of the world and yet it, it's almost as if it's almost as if because of that you were like well I guess I have to get into the ring on this one and I'm going to go ahead and just say, look, I'm not going to say I'm guilty of something I didn't do. So I'm going to follow this through. And so you kept trucking. So then they dropped that. So they, let's go to the next victory. Well, 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 just a little, little on that, that, that was an eye opener. That was a real eye opener because when you go into court, I was only under the assumption that I was innocent until proven guilty. <laughs> mm -mm. That's Certainly not, not what it is. You That's are right. guilty until you prove you are innocent. And that judge did everything she could do because they had already made this bargain of a plea bargain. That judge did everything that she could do to try to get me to take a plea bargain. 
to the point that I was crying in court. She stopped me from talking. She stopped me from using witness statements. She stopped me from using videos. Everything that I would try to point out, she says, it's irrelevant. It doesn't matter. That's not the charge. Well, I'm sorry, but these people were assaulting me, but that didn't matter. So I'm sorry. I just It's emotional. But that was a big lesson because you think that when you hear people that are 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 guilty that they were actually fairly they were guilty but that also comes into another problem in canada where if you're poor what are you going to do see because this judge i i am positive this judge didn't think that i would go ahead for appeals because she knew i was disabled she knew i was on disability she knew that she had to have known that the transcripts cost a fortune. If it wasn't for Stan for thee, I would never have been able to appeal that. Right. It were over $3,000. Right. So why is, why is it that when you're found guilty, you don't have the right to have those transcripts. You have to pay for that. So if you can't pay for them, you're a convicted criminal the rest of your life. That's not justice. It's not right. Right. Fortunately, yeah, Stand for thee. They raised the money so that I could get those transcripts so I could keep fighting. Sorry. No, no, it's okay. No, no. I mean, I warned it's, you. yeah, yeah, no, no. That's Hey, this is an honest interview, right? And it's, uh, that's, that's what we want. We want, because that's what it's about. It's about real people. And this is why, you know, you know how I am, right? Like this is the problem with unrighteous decrees, right? When Isaiah, the prophet says, woe to you that decree unrighteous decrees. When we make mandates and or policies that are inappropriate, it moves people to become inappropriate, right? And this is, you know, so you have this woman who's um, on disability, is trying to go get some food for her mom, and then in in the end, look at all these, all because of unrighteous decrees, silly barriers uh, that were unnecessary. All of a sudden, it doesn't matter that you have difficulty walking, right? Which which is apparent, by the way. It is visible, you know, and, um, you know, because you've been on a few of our Zooms. So, you know, I've seen you walking in and walking out. It is very apparent. I've seen you walking with the cane. And uh, so, you know, we we are supposed to stand up and, and assist those who um, are maybe, let's say, weaker in, in, in physical condition and or require our help, right? So if, you know, you got a little child, little baby, you try to help the baby. If you got someone who's elderly or disabled, doesn't really matter how old they are, anybody who is in a weaker position of any kind, we're supposed to be called to help those people. Now, now you have all these folks coming against you while you're just trying to do something decent for your mom and you're having problems there. And this is all based around all these kind of unrighteous decrees and it really influenced people. This is why I say bad laws can easily create bad manners. <laughs> and that's clearly what's happened here. And then you go into a courtroom and you're trying to get into a situation where I say, okay, well, they'll treat me fair here. And then you go, well, hold on a second. That's actually not exactly what's going on here. And then to make an appeal to a decision that I disagree with, it cost me thousands of dollars. So we're right back into the game of, well, what if I can't afford it? It's a too bad, so sad for you situation. And so obviously this is where, this is why I try to always say, look, I mean, stand for thee, show it up. And when I see those types of good works, right? They showed up, people got behind, they donated a little bit of loot and collected some of this money so that you could continue fighting um, against this immorality. And uh, so, you know, special thanks to everybody who did donate and stand for thee, of course. Um, but it still raises the question, yeah, why should this cost that kind of money to be able to appeal a decision as a, as a citizen, uh, particularly someone who's not necessarily uh, has a ton of funds, especially? I mean, you know, even with income tax, right? We do things like, okay, if someone has lower income, we don't tax them as much. Why? Because they're lower income. Why are we charging thousands of dollars for transcripts if somebody's self-representing themselves and they can't afford to purchase that, you know? And so, I mean, it re really brings a problem in the justice system to light. So I'm glad you shared that part because I, I had no idea about that. But I had heard about the transcript cost, but I didn't realize that you would, in order to appeal, you had to purchase those. So I'm glad you told me that. Thank you. You okay. have to have transcripts. My, mine were $3,950. I got $400 back. That's the, that's unbelievable you have to have those transcripts and 
this really bothered me that I got these charges because I've been abused my whole life. I've been beaten up. And, and I believe this woman went after me because I was older. I was fat. Let's tell the truth. I have never to have assault charges. I have never in my whole life gone out to hurt another person. And not one person in that store came to help me. Not one of those employees asked, what happened? Can, can we help? None of them. That really bothered me. And then yeah. getting this conviction, I've told you, getting this conviction, but they can use that conviction on other people that were went into stores and were harassed and abused. They can use my conviction against them. That's also why it was so important that I do this appeal. And it wasn't just the money that was right with Stan for the I, they helped me learn. I had to learn the law. I had to mm -hmm. learn the law. I had to learn a, a whole bunch of statutes and case laws. I had to, months and months worth of work. So I had help with that. I had help with support. Everybody on stand for the, everybody was helping me from one side of Canada to the other. So I would never have been able to do what I did if it wasn't for them. I would have, I would have had to take a plea bargain. I would right. have had to. What am I supposed to do? I didn't know anything. Right. I had yeah. to learn all this. Right. So. Yeah. And, and, and by the way, just for clarification, because you had said to me many times, I'm doing this because I don't want this to set a precedence that they'd be able to do this to other people. And uh, so here's, here's someone that doesn't have connections in and out of the world. And, and there you are with, with this mode, with this mentality of saying, well, you know, I, I don't want this to happen to other people. So, you know, kudos to you and, and, uh, and, and to all those that, who assisted, but that's what we're supposed to do when we see someone that's in, a, in a trying situation, we're supposed to gather around and help them. So I'm really glad that um, that uh, you were provided for. And so, of, of course, you overturned this conviction. They had to drop it, if I'm if I'm understanding this correctly, right? So it it was months and months of work for this appeal. Um, I I I got a lot of help. Um, fortunately, I had Kate. Kate came with me. This judge let me have a. Uh, 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 a Mackenzie friend and he let mm -hmm. her speak so that was a huge help because I wasn't able to read my factum I had my factum I had everything done the crown I had a week before trial I had sent a message because I hadn't got any response from my factum then he sends his crap and I had to respond to that uh, Rebecca spent hours and hours with me late at night so Two other people came with me and they thought that it went out really well. Um, I was glad when I got um, the judgment. So I was acquitted of all charges and my um, sentencing was squash. Then I saw the um, media and that really got me upset because they made it sound like it. I just got this on uh, a technicality. Because that's what the media does, right? They don't want they don't want you to know the truth. It wasn't just a technicality. They also couldn't prove mens rea. Right. So their technicalities was is the judge wouldn't allow me to have a character witness. So he picked the smallest thing that he could for to acquit. But then they put in that um, they couldn't prove mens rea. Mens rea means I had to have intent. There was no intent. My intent was to get groceries. I right. didn't want to hurt anybody. I just wanted to get, I wanted to leave and I couldn't. So right. it's and been that's really, that really hard. It's been, I can't tell you, how, it's the hardest thing I've ever had to do. But it's the first time I've ever had, to, I've ever stood up for myself though, too. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but no, and I'm glad that they can't use, they can't use that against other people now. Right. Right. And so now, so if Sorry. you know, to, no, no, it's okay. It's okay. Um, because then, because again, now, so ultimately in total, what did you have? You had three charges originally in total. Am I right? So I had causing a disturbance okay. and two counts of assault, which are criminal. They're all okay. criminal. And then was that other charge they put in? Was that the fourth one? Or is that the, the, uh, did you already mention? So the other, the other charge was after my trial. That was because I didn't show up for sentencing. That's right. Okay. So it was right. contempt. 
That's also a criminal charge. That's right. So that one got reversed, right? Or obviously kiboshed. They, right? they dismissed it. They dismissed it. Okay. And then ultimately the other three charges, did they all get dropped at the same time? So the judges, so, so judge Thompson's ruling from the, my appeal was that all three charges were acquitted, which means they're gone. And then my sentencing was stayed. Now he said that I, I had, I had actually done a third of my sentencing which isn't the truth. I never did have any sentencing because I phoned the parole board and they, I, I, I'm not on, I was not on their docket at all because they couldn't, they can't, they can't go ahead and start my sentencing when I have an appeal in. That's really criminal to make right, you. Right. Right. So anyway, so yeah, so everything is, is gone. It's gone and done. And, and, and if you don't mind, so, and, what were some of the um, legal tactics that you was was the Canadian Bill of Rights involved at all? Um, oh, go go ahead, Sharon. Like some yeah, ma maybe so, mention a few of those little tidbits, just in case, so people know, um, you know, a little bit. I mean, we don't have to go to every detail, but just uh, to kind of show uh, that you were self representing, you had a lot of assistance. But uh, yeah, did you use the bill? I it, it, I literally had to. I spent months worth of reading case law and studying, and it wasn't just. I had to do a lot of, lot of work. So the one was the statute of limitations, which okay. is the 12 months. So that's from April 24th to April uh, 2020, to April 24th, 2021. That's the, that's the length of time that they have to charge me, not to file charges. That's different. They right. have to notify me and charge me. They didn't. It wasn't until November and I have it on the record and in the trial that um, the Crown admitted that I was notified December 6, 2021. Well, right. that's even after I was charged. I was notified when I got charged on November 4th. So then there was that. There was also the um, statute of limitations on how long a, a trial can last, how long a trial can last. And that's 18 mm. months. So it had gone over that. And I was denied um, video. So I there was video of the store from the incident. So I will ask for the video from the time I went into the store to the time I left. I was denied that. And the crown said, well, he, he led on, that was the, the one that was in the appeal, by the way, he led on the to the judge that, well, it was irrelevant. It's not part of this. Well, it was irrelevant because it showed that I had been in the store for over half an hour and I had not caused any problem. I was denied that. He says it's because it's over two years, it's not available anymore. That's why there's a statute of limitations in the first dang place so that I can have a full defense. Then there's the 18 months that they have to finish it up in, in the court. So we had that too, which is um, um, R versus Jordan, R versus Grazi. They can't, they can't take forever. So mine took till it was April 24th, 2020 to April 23rd, um, April 23rd, 2023. Mm. That's over 18 months. Sorry, that's wrong. Then there was um, the fact she denied my disabilities. She denied me having a character witness. It's a character witness because they're attacking my character the whole time. So my character witness was so that I had someone defending me saying, this, this is what this person is really like. This is, this is how she is viewed in the, in the community. This woman has known me for 22 years. I lived beside her for 15. She knew she knew what I was like. So she denied me of that. She denied me of of having a fair trial because she stopped me. She changed. She didn't allow me to use the um, the the um, witness statements. She didn't allow me to use the videos. Every time I asked a question, she interrupted, which. And then she would change the questioning. So one of the one of the questions was, as I asked Holton, is was I not trying to leave? The judge actually stopped me and says, No, he can't ask her that. You have to you have to ask her this way. Which way am I supposed to leave? She was constantly interfering with my cross examination, which is not right. They're not allowed to do that. She's supposed to be a judge. She's supposed to be impartial. That was the and first the, thing I just, found. And, they and they lie. For, yeah, that's another thing, right? So so every what, single one of them lie. 
So is and was were all these things that you're kind of listing off were these kind of cited when you did the appeal and then they were taking a look they saw all these misbehaviors this inappropriate um, way of handling things so that's why you're citing all these things like well they saw it was beyond the statute of limitations they saw that the judge was interrupting my questioning and kind of messing me up and they're like looking at the transcripts going yeah this that's not good oh, okay that and so that's how you're kind of gaining the victory, if you will. They're they're actually watching the process that occurred and going, wait a minute, this is way out of bounds. Right, because on an appeal, you're only allowed, on an appeal, you're only allowed to use errors in law. So these are errors in law. And another one, a big one, a huge one that was ignored was the BC Security Service, Service Act, which means it's the security guards, which means no one under no circumstances are is allowed to touch you. They're not allowed to touch you. Even a security guard has five different criterias before they're allowed to touch you. And every single one of these employees assaulted me and extorted me. They were not supposed to touch me. And Dalton actually on the stand had admitted because he was asked, well, what's your store policy for someone that's stealing food because they all said I was trying to steal food which is absolutely ridiculous you've done all this to me you really think I'm going to steal food it's like I'm not a thief anyway so he admitted that their store policy is a no chase policy which means they're not supposed to chase anybody that's trying to steal food then why was he grabbing my cart he had mm. no business touching me so he and the violated- BC security service act says that they're not allowed it's against the law plus they also committed fraud because they made a false statement to the police. They also perjured themselves on the stand. And was this was so, this all found in, in the transcripts? So in my factum, I had to point out these different errors and then Kate have to show where in, this is why you need the transcripts, where in the transcripts they said this, so you can back, you have to back everything up. So you can show where they said this in the transcripts and where they're not allowed to do this or what they were doing. So everything was outlined at this time or where it was on the videos were all time stamped. And then all the case laws were there. And then all the all the other laws, the, the Canadian Bill of Rights. And the judge tried to say, well, the Canadian Bill of Rights isn't valid because the, the charter supersedes it. Well, no, it doesn't because the Statutory Instruments Act says it doesn't. Then there's the, uh, oh, I don't know if I can remember them all. Uh, well, the charter itself. In I think it's section twenty six. Says all right? other other laws before this are still valid, and then there was a couple other things. So it, there was a, I can't remember them all. There there was, so, and then there's also case law for causing a disturbance. Um, there was ones with cops. I can't remember them all. There was um, R versus keen or something i think it's clean or something he was actually self-representing and he won so that was that was the hard work that was what took so long and so many months because even though i had help i had to read all these case laws and the uh criminal notebook there's so much information in the criminal notebook because there was one of and I can't remember which one it was but one of the case laws that I found from the criminal notebook was that this woman um it was it was actually a lawyer and the judge had interrupted her a couple of times and she was she was acquitted because the judge interrupted her uh defense so it it was long it was hard it was very very stressful so, you know, it's interesting to me because when I listen to this, I'm kind of just thinking to myself what most of the time they're just banking that people don't want to go through this long haul. You know, this uh, I, I like to use this as a as a as an example, the Shawshank Redemption, when the guy has to crawl, you know, he has to break through a wall. He has this whole thing he has to do and he has to break through the wall and crawl through a sewer that's, you know, 500 in 50 meters long of who knows what's in there. And then to, in order to get to that spot where he's finally, you know, in Mexico on a beach, sanding a boat. Right. And that's kind of like I the picture. I, as it, I th- I've always thought, you know, he says, uh, I've always thought that's a, that was part of the message of the movie that, uh, cause he was obviously innocent in that movie as well, but he was wrongfully convicted. And so, um, you know, I kind of look at these situations and say, you know, this, this is the, 
this is why to ha- kind of see it through and having the tenacity and the courage uh, to go through what clearly you, no one really wants to go through this nonsense. <laughs> this is not something that people really desire to do. And yet here's a person that I'm looking at and I've known you for uh, a decent while now, Kim. And, you know, I'm, I'm guessing if people would have, you know, thought to themselves, you know, who would be a great person to, you know, let's say, you know, take on the big, the, you know, the government, if you will. Uh, and, and go to courts to, to battle against unrighteous decrees and inappropriate behaviors during a time where they were kind of inventing all kinds of new rules during the C-19 stuff. And, you know, you would think that it was more of the people, like you're, the natural person kind of thinks, well, people who are a little positioned a little bit better, maybe they have a few connections. And then, you know, no, no, it's, it's someone who has difficulty walking, um, is just freshly moved really to the area, um, is simply just trying to get some food over to her mom and runs into all this controversy. And it kind of reminds me of what happened to, uh, you know me, I'm always going to use scriptural uh, comparisons as well is, is where, when Joseph gets tossed into the pit from his, from his brothers, and then eventually how it ends up working out. And then Joseph says to his brothers, he says, well, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. You know, and so you went through a lot of stuff and even just listening to some of the things that, you you know, I'm a little more informed about things that you've listed about the statute of limitations and, um, and how, how if a judge interrupts you, that that's actually inappropriate and, and the, the amount of money for the transcripts. But again, you can use that in your appeal and things of this nature. Like it's, it's citizens like yourself who are willing to go through that process that can come and then tell us your story. You're victorious. It was difficult. You're victorious. But this is how you have really helped people by being willing to go through the experience. And now you did offer a situation where, you know what, now at least you can't use my case as a precedence where you guys think you can do this again in the future because actually what you ended up doing was proving that what they were doing was indeed inappropriate, inconsiderate. And I I always like to go to the highest law, uh, which is the moral law, which is they were not loving their neighbor as themselves. Is is there, what part of this then because there might be some people thinking, well, is there therefore any kind of retribution? In other words, they charged you and it all got dismissed, but they really, so ultimately when I look at that as, you know, as a natural person, like, so, well, then really what that says is they should have never charged you in the first place and they should have never put you through this in the first place. So is there any retribution? Um, is this something that's on your mind? Is this, uh, you know, what's, what's, your, what's your thoughts on, you know, kind of, for lack of better words, it's like, well, hey, you know, you did something you weren't supposed to do and, you know, you kind of, uh, you, you know, and it's proven that you weren't supposed to do it. So you guys kind of owe me now. <laughs> what's, what are your thoughts yeah, on I'm, that, if you don't mind me asking? I have been fighting this. This has been really hard. Um. So many people want me to to sue them. Mm-hmm. My sister and brother included. Part of me wants to because she thinks she wants. But then the other part is I don't want to be in court anymore. Mm-hmm. I have spent way too much time in court. But then there's the fear am I going to get another judge that it's just vindictive as Judge Flowelli was. What is that going to do? I don't, and I don't do well in court. I really don't. You, you mean emotionally? You mean emotionally? Emotionally. I just, I okay. don't. Because right. I, it just causes me so much stress. Right. I have to prove that I didn't do anything. Yeah. So a yeah. lot of people want me to, and because of Sarang Gabriselli is stealing the 5600 and fifty dollars off of me. I thought I would get a lawyer because the judge wouldn't let me speak. But part of me is going, "What's it going to do? What's it going to prove? What's it going to show? Really? Because it's not about money. I really don't care. I mean, I lost already lost all my credit cards. They won't give them back to me because of it. But I get it because we keep saying we have to hold these people accountable for what they do is wrong." Yeah, it's a tough, that's a, it's a tough decision, isn't it? Yeah, but because I have prayed about it. Well, one day they're going to have to face God. They already know what they did was wrong. They know what they did was wrong. Yeah. 
So I, I just, four years, four years battling this. Yeah. The huge part of me, I'm so tired. I don't want to do it anymore. I'm 61 freaking years old now. Do I want to spend another two years in court? Who knows how long? Right. You know, so I have been battling it. Okay. And I don't, well, part of me doesn't want to let other people down. Well, let, let me let me let me speak on behalf of other people. You didn't let anybody down. You saw it all the way through, You're not and they going had to, after them. Well, they 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 had to dismiss the charges, and that is a victory. That is indeed a victory, and they can't use your case as any kind of precedence. And that was what you set out to do. Now, at this point, I don't think anybody um, should be asking anything else of you. You do what you feel moved in the heart and in the spirit to do. And uh, in the meantime, I just want to say thank you so much for sharing your story and the lessons you've learned. And congratulations on the dismissals, because those are victories. Because this is, uh, I'm going to use my brother Damaduch's line here. You know, this world sometimes can be a pretty hostile environment. <laughs> and it has its challenges indeed. And uh, you took on those challenges and um, you didn't have a lot of uh, advantages to do it. But yet, this is kind of where I kind of always look at it and say, you know, this is where you were really... Uh, you know, you were prayerful. I think you were blessed. And I think God provided you the right people, put the right people around you to assist you. And uh, that's kind of uh, why my perspective is, is sometimes, you know, God uses, even think Paul talks about, uh, in fact, I think uh, one of the scriptures that was there where, where Jesus says to Paul, he says, my, my, my strength is in your weakness. And um, I think that, you know, oftentimes in the scriptures, you, you see God using people that are, that seem, like, well, they can't, they're kind of like David and Goliath, right? It's like, it's like, well, how's David going to take on Goliath? Well, in this case, you were David and you took on Goliath. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, Goliath at minimum had to retreat. And uh, so we, I, I'm going to speak on behalf of all Canadian citizens uh, here. I'll be a little bold, at least the Canadian citizens that uh, think that what went on there since, you know, with the uh, C-19 mandates was out of bounds. Um, I just want to thank you on behalf of all Canadian citizens for going through the meters upon meters of crap just to uh, just to kind of make sure that uh, you set a precedence that uh, says, hey, you're not supposed to do this to people. And um, I really appreciate you sharing the lessons you learned. And uh, I just, uh, hey, praise God, you got them to dismiss. Take some time with your thoughts on on what you want to do next. And, and, and guess what? Taking time for yourself and moving on is not necessarily the wrong thing to do. So you just uh, tune into your heart, maybe talk to some other brothers and sisters and people you trust around you, but take your time with it and don't, uh, you know, because sometimes there is that perspective of sometimes maybe, you know, life is a little too short to always argue with people all the time. And uh, you might want to take some of this time for some other things that are, are good for your life. And uh, so you, you did a lot. Oh, my pleasure. I and I it. It's a lot. Oh. No, no, thank you. And and again, you know, thank and thank you for sharing your story with me so that I can share it with other people too and and uh kind of and I, I learned a couple things too as you were going through the story. So I really appreciate you and and uh thank you so much. And uh we'll be seeing you on on scripture nights uh from time to time, I'm sure. And I thank you for this yeah. interview. All right. Well, God bless you, girl. Thank you for sharing this with us, okay? God bless you, Tate. Thank you so right. much. Talk to you soon. <laughs>